Maybe you want to know how to make more silver. Maybe you're confused on how people are running out of silver. Maybe you want to learn from the mistakes others have made so you don't make them yourself. Regardless of the situation, I got you. Hey everyone, I'm Barkley, and I have seven ways to make silver and five ways to save silver. Let's start with making silver. Like with most things in this game, the more alts, the better. And your silver income is one of them. For number one, we have Chaos Dungeons. They give around 50, 60K silver each for the first two in tier three. This number can be boosted by the rested bonus as well. You still get silver after the first two, but even at 1385, they only give like 3.5K. If you've done everything else you can do for silver for the day, this isn't terrible. It didn't really feel efficient for me. Endless Chaos Dungeon farming isn't as good as it once was, but if you're really desperate for silver, it is there. Number two, Chaos Dungeons drop cube tickets. These are always worth doing, even if it's just for the silver. You might have a few tickets from previous tiers, you should run those as well. For number three, the Bloodstone Vendor is another place to get silver. The first tab has silver boxes and the third tab has the entrance keys. The silver boxes aren't high on the list of things I'd buy even while low on silver, but I would buy these after I got everything else I wanted. But the entrance ticket boxes are a different story for me. Getting either a boss rush ticket, a cube ticket, or flat silver are all good options. These will either save you silver or make you silver. Boss rush gives gems and leap stones. Running the cube gives silver, hunting materials and skill books. The flat silver is the worst of the three and it's still good. For number four, you have your Una quest. For Una dailies, the main choice for silver will be the low paying dailies on your tier three alts. At tier two, they aren't bad, but the silver is scaled off of item level. So I'll run my silver dailies on tier three alts and do as many reputations as I can on my tier two characters. The best way to do this is to set up a Bifrost at low paying island, Shushire, Vern, and Arthetine. These give the most silver because they're the furthest away but you're using the Bifrost, so this doesn't matter. You can do all three of these in less than five minutes, but you also wanna be aware of good reputations with quests that give silver. For example, appearing in the Chaos Reputation gives you the Caden card, the Isteri Island token, and almost 200K silver. You won't complete this quest as fast as the low paying dailies, but there's value that isn't purely silver. Taking on Tuki is another good example of silver from the daily and Giant's Heart from the Reputation. Una Weeklies are another good source for silver, there's one Chaos Dungeon Weekly, two Cube Weeklies, and one Boss Rush Weekly that all reward silver. I only do these on my Tier 3 alts. They felt pretty bad outside of that for me. My Tier 3 alts are parked where I want them right now, so I can slow down on gathering Leap Stones, at least for a little bit. For number five, we have Sea Bounties. These rewards are a long grind. I haven't really started it yet, but this reward system has a total of around 4 million silver. If you've been grinding out map completion, you might have a few of these and weren't motivated to get the maps done. This might change that. I can't imagine this is something that you'll knock out quickly, but this is something to keep in mind when planning horizontal progression. Number six are the side quests in Yorn, Phaeton, and Punika. The quests chains that give large amounts of silver seem to be only one-time things for your roster, but you don't want to ignore these. They're good if you're low on silver and very time efficient. Punika being the best for silver, of course. So if you are tier three, I'd start there and work my way back. I probably wouldn't go all the way back to Rowendell, but Yorn has a good amount of quests that give 50k silver each, and these are still worth doing. For number seven, you have Rapport. It's another good way to get silver, but it's not repeatable. You may have some rewards from people you unlocked but never paid attention to, so you can go on your menu and check these out, but really there's other rewards that are worth more than silver. But like with the sea bounties, this is another one just to keep in mind. Now let's talk about five ways you can save silver. Number one, don't reroll your gems, especially in tier two. This is a trap, don't fall for it. If it's something I won't use, I just fuse them together. For tier three, it's slightly different. If it's something I know is good and I don't need it, I'll try to sell it on the auction house. Keep in mind that gems are roster bound, so you can funnel gems from your alts to your main and speed this process up regardless of class. For number two, understand that the skill tripods on your gear prior to 1370 are gonna get replaced. They aren't terribly expensive to transfer, but every bit counts. At 1370, you'll be upgrading to a legendary set of gear, so the tripods you would have invested in earlier would be wasted. Tripods will make your character feel better. They can help you get MVP more often, but they're not gonna keep you from clearing content. That Abyssal Dungeon wipe and that Guardian Ray wipe is gonna happen regardless. The guy with tier one grudge is gonna take way more to carry him than that. For number three, the highest level health potions are one of the worst things to spend silver on. At 1500 silver for 30K health, just don't do this. The second highest level potion costs less than half and is way more efficient. You'd be better off killing mobs for collectibles in Punika and picking these up as a byproduct. I'm not always patient enough for this, but I will buy my potions, but I also try my best to never use them. I will gladly run a Chaos Dungeon at 15% health. 
For number four, try to go for the least expensive cooking collectibles with Adventure Tome completion. If you aren't going above 80% in a zone, you probably have better options. Do those first, then come back. And the RNG ones will have you gambling away all of your silver. It's just not worth it if you can look somewhere else. Awakening shards are another trap you could easily fall into. Instead of spending silver, you can buy these with gold from the auction house. For 10 for one gold. Right now I'm paying with gold, but this depends on your silver and gold situations. You may or may not find this to be worth it, but you're now aware of the option. Thank you guys for watching. I wanted to keep this video as short as possible. It's not a 10 minute video topic at all, but if you can do me a favor, comment, like, and subscribe. It's much appreciated. It helps with the algorithm. Follow me on Twitch. I plan on going live three times a week again very soon, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.